With ad revenue on YouTube being the way it was, I thought, why not start back up an old series here on YouTube, the My Thoughts Don't Matter series, where my thoughts literally do not matter. Hope you guys all enjoy. And uh, to refocus and restart up this series, again, this is actually number three. My first two didn't go so well. It was way back in the day, but I think I need a more of an outlet to actually talk to all of you real CSGO, your hardcore CSGO fan base, who actually want to leave comments down below on your thoughts on each and every topic. And so that's why I've decided to restart this series. I'm still going to call it number three for the My Thoughts Don't Matter series, but this actually will be all about no better subject out there right now than to talk about the downfall of the Immortals organization. I'm going to recap for all of you what has happened in the past year or so and the downfall of this CSGO team and even the organization as a whole. And I want you guys to do me a favor and comment down below your thoughts about this. Now in the future, I obviously hope to have better audio and I really can't promise you guys this series to be as frequent as I would like it to be or as best as other analysts out there like Thorne per se because the guy knows so much information. But I do know quite a bit of information about the Immortals situation off the top of my head because I've been researching it for such a long time. I've talked about it on my CSGO news channel for so long as well. So I thought, why not bring back a series which really interacts with all of you guys and I can really respond to these comments in full detail. So hope you guys all enjoy. Let's talk about the fall of the Immortals organization, which really does go back to last year, you know, uh, mid to late uh, 2016, I believe. And right around this time is when we saw the Immortals organization kind of hit a plateau with FNX on their roster. Now, again, we tend to actually blame FNX for a variety of issues being internal conflict. And we've actually seen in the, in the past, of course, players who are not able to get along with their teammates usually are not successful and that's maybe the reason why FNX has been off the scene so long or off the grid as of right now still under contract allegedly with an Immortals organization after some big issues. Over that course of two and a half months on their starting roster we saw a big plateau. No real big wins from the Immortals roster while Phelps had a pretty big surge with his start with SK Gaming that actually plateaued off and again has actually kind of somewhat returned as they replaced him with Bolts but again we saw a big influx of kind of a plateau with the Immortals organization but then their peak did start once once they actually kicked him off their roster back to the bench and replaced him with a rising star known as KNG. He actually came formerly from Red Reserve. That Red Reserve CSGO roster had been on and off. KNG was actually going to join a, a team like Selfless if they ever went to a Brazilian roster. That actually did fall through. And then again, this, this rising star joins the Immortals organization and like we've seen so many times in the past, has a kickstart, has a uh, you know a rising star of the making. We saw so many tweets out there of this guy you know really being the, the legit stuff for this team, the real turnaround for the Immortals organization. And they did prove this on their road to the PGL Major, placing second to Gambit Gaming in that best of three. They went all the way to map three, a very close series, and we thought this is the rise of the Immortals team who is going to take over the number one spot in the Brazilian scene, but it turns out that was not so. This following, actually, DreamHack Montreal a couple months later, and the team was still doing quite well, making a championship here and there, making second in the Major, then going to DreamHack Montreal and making the championship against Team North. We thought this team was going to be one of the better, not if not the best Brazilian team out there, maybe even a top five team in the world consistently. But then we saw the downfall really start here. There were so many instances to actually talk about when it came to DreamHack Montreal. This is when the team internally did fall apart. I'm sure a lot of you guys heard about the CLG instance. Not only did this team of mortals actually show up late for the championship match, they had to forfeit map one to north because we had Henny, Lucas, and KNG supposedly out late the night before. They were the three players who were actually late to that matchup having to forfeit map one. But before this, we actually heard rumors from analysts out there who were commenting the day before. They were actually late to the semifinals as well against CLG. But luckily, that, that was actually not a forfeited match. They were they were within the just late enough to actually you know be able to set up on time and play that series, and of course beat CLG. And I'm sure you guys have heard about this. Of course, CLG's very own FNS, all the players in the same hotel. The the string of tweets uh, coming from KNG saying "prove it or I'll kill you." The threats coming from time to time, either through you know through of course Twitter or even IRL threats, and of course the police having to be called allegedly uh, on their on their own players. We had a Mortals coach having to call the cops on KNG himself. This is all allegedly. We're not really sure if Zach actually had to call the cops, um, but you know, from several, uh, from several, a variety of actual hosts there that were actually at the event, we can probably prove the cops were actually involved. Now, again, this of course led Immortals organization to respond not only to those allegations against KNG and its threats to other players out there, but also to the, of course the instance of these players being late because they were out partying. We also saw Noah Winston, the founder and CEO of the Immortals organization, make his post about this, uh, kind of a, a big uproar because he was just so calm about it. But then again, we actually 
actually saw they did actually take action. They take these things very seriously. And what we can infer as of right now, although I still can't believe this. What, what do you think guys think about this? I've talked to many people out there because of course uh, eventually that came to the conclusion that Immortals was going to kick out KNG completely out of their organization. I still thought somehow they might have a contract uh, around him because of course he has not joined any team since then. So I, I myself have my own my own inference that I think that he's still under some kind of liabil liability contract with Team Immortals, but who knows? They say he's out of the organization completely. And then shortly afterwards, guys, within weeks, we saw the twins, Henny and Lucas, obviously good friends of KNG. They also left the organization. And this is when the up riot really begins. The downfall truly starts as we see these big players, the big trio leave. And of course, leave, losing FNX before that didn't help at all. So we lose KNG and of course, Henny and Lucas shortly after that. And they're being replaced by de definitely lower tier Brazilian players uh, from teams like Tempo Storm. And of course, teams like Team One are definitely targets for uh, Immortals and their new players out there. They actually pick up players SHZ and Destiny to replace Henny and Lucas and definitely uh, a, a degrading players there as well. Now the, the struggles I'm sure you guys are all aware do still continue and we see the internal conflict of a team who is once on top have to go through these player losses. You, you see people like Steel and Bolts have to see their team deteriorate and make last second decisions and we have people like Bolts who are next up in the lineup actually decide to leave the team instead of trying to stick around and fix a sinking ship. And I'm not blaming the guy at all. I, I really, you cannot blame this guy. When you see an opportunity, uh, you're the number two Brazilian team in the world right now, and SK Gaming comes knocking at your door, and your sinking ship of Immortals is actually going down much faster than you thought, and they offer you a, a, a probably a really nice contract, of course, for SK to replace Phelps later on. I'm sure you guys have, uh, have all heard these stories as well. Of course you're going to take that, and I'm sure he probably had a, a close talk with his coach or the Immortals organization, and they came to some kind of agreement. Of course, they had to let SK buy out his contract, so I'm sure they were fine with what they saw left of the roster, they really couldn't blame a player for trying to go up to an SK Gaming instead of sticking around on Immortals as well. And then of course the most recent news we saw, we saw the last top tier player on SK Gaming that was Steel finally abandoned ship. Now of course he's joining Team Liquid and you really can't blame him. I'm sure Liquid bought his, bought his contract for a substantial amount and are paying him a very very healthy fee. And of course we've seen how much he's actually enjoyed playing with Liquid. Their first tournament together shortly after we saw many tweets. Of course we saw many quotes from Steel saying he's so happy playing again and that makes you happy as a viewer right but it doesn't really make you realize the downfall of this immortals organization within just a year and actually you can really nail it down to a two and a half month span we go back to september of this year of 2017 that is when they first lost kng and ever since losing that primary rising star this team has actually somehow become almost dysfunctional completely in the two and a half month time span now i say this because we've now heard even more recent rumors that we have a team of tempo storm now tempo storm is actually split off into two rosters. They have a European roster composed of mainly uh, that the TV show, the gaming show. If you guys remember Gamer Z, they had a TV show, um, mainly a Twitch show. And that's their, their European roster pr is composed primarily of two of those members. They also have a, a, South, a South American or a Brazilian roster as well. And they are now targeting the only two players on that Brazilian roster of Immortals who can actually play in America, which means if they actually sell these guys out, if Immortals actually does this, they are actually shooting themselves in the chest. There'll be nothing left. And of course, if you guys have not heard, we do have Tempo Storm actually qualifying for the major qualifier. So who would have guessed? Uh, I mean, to see the list of Brazilian teams who have actually qualified and the list who did not qualify, it's it's insane. I mean, if you were to just look at the teams who actually qualified from the Brazilian region for the American minor or even the uh, major qualifier itself, or uh, the, the of course the Amoinic minor going into that system itself, you see teams like Team One, a Brazilian team who's come out of nowhere seemingly this year, as well as alongside them, Luminosity Gaming, a team that I preached about early on for ESL Pro League, and they've, they've managed to do quite well in ESL Pro League as well after a rough start. You see teams like Team One and Luminosity Gaming out qualify a team like Immortals. Immortals, of course, not qualifying for the minor and not making the major qualifier either. Now, of course, neither of those Brazilian teams actually made the major qualifier, but they did actually at least make the minor itself. To see a fall of this organization of this size within such a short span of time has been absolutely shocking for me to see. And I am, and I am for one. I don't know about you guys, all you. I don't know how many of you are actually Brazilian who can actually watch this video and and uh, you know not hate on it for so for some reason. But uh, the main thing I want to really speculate is I'm really curious about the response time of Noah Winston. What is he going to do in the next few months? Is he going to allow Tempo Storm to buy out the remaining leaders on that team, the players who were actually there the longest? I think Horvy is now the veteran of that squad. He was a stand-in player and actually had visa issues. So I think he's been tied to them the longest of any of those current players and likely going to be a leader if they even have a leader in that team right now. So I want to know what you guys' overall thoughts about this. Have we seen in the past a downfall of an organization as fast as Immortals? And what will they do in response to this? Can this team actually still be saved? 
I'm not sure there's any hope right now. As of right now, I think SK Gaming has branched themselves so far away as the number one dominant Brazilian team. We've now seen them most recently, of course, in tournaments like Epicenter doing, you know, all right. Of course, they they always come to show up at the majors, usually making out of playoffs. Uh, you know, actually, almost always making out of playoffs. And on top of that, the most recent event here, we've had, of course, IEM Oakland doing quite well as well, making semifinals for SK Gaming. So we really can't complain where that team is at. And they are by far and away the number one Brazilian team. And now we have the branch off. We we before, of course. Two and a half months ago, we had Immortals and SK Gaming almost neck and neck, and now we have SK Gaming branching off into several other teams. So SK Gaming is the one up top here. Then we have Team One, Tempo Storm, their Brazilian roster. We have Luminosity Gaming, and now we have Immortals all branching off far, far below where SK Gaming is at, and they are now the certified number one Brazilian team. What will Immortals do? Leave a comment down below, and I hope you guys all enjoy this episode of My Thoughts Don't Matter, because they surely don't.